Think back to how we defined vector spaces. We started by looking at column vectors in Rn. We stated a theorem, a list of properties that column vectors satisfy. And then we turned that theorem into a definition, any set that satisfied those properties was called a vector space. We are now going to do the same thing with dot products. An inner product space is a vector space V with a function from the Cartesian product of V with itself into R such that that function satisfies some properties. Before I state those properties, let's give a little notation. The standard notation for a function like this would be something like that. This is the function we use in calculus two, um, calculus three, for example. However, this function that we're looking at has special notation. Instead of using our F notation, we put our inputs inside these kind of pointy brackets. And the properties that have to be satisfied are as follows. The inner product of a vector v with a vector w equals the inner product of w with v. That is, this is commutative. The inner product of v plus w with z is the inner product of v and z plus the inner product of w and z. The inner product of alpha v and w, where alpha is a scalar, is alpha times the inner product of v and w. And these conditions are usually stated as one, but the inner product of any vector with itself is non-negative. And the inner product of a vector with itself is zero if and only if the vector is the zero vector. Without any context, these properties might seem a kind of arbitrary. But these are precisely the properties that the dot product has. So just as with vector spaces, when we went from column vectors and generalized that definition, here we're going from dot products and generalizing that definition. And this step gives us a bunch of other definitions very quickly. Anything that we defined in terms of dot products, we can do in terms of inner products. So if V is any inner product space, we can define the norm of a vector to be the square root of the inner product of the vector with itself. And once we've defined the norm, we can define the distance between two vectors 
factors to be the norm of their difference. And we can also define orthogonality two vectors are orthogonal if and only if their, sorry, their inner product equals zero. Notice that all of these definitions depend on the inner product. One vector space can have different inner products defined on it. So for example, two vectors might be orthogonal in terms of one, in our product, but not orthogonal in terms of another. So it's not enough to just say that a vector space is an inner product space. You have to say what the inner product is.